Hey gamers, it's Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire. I'm back with another of my little Kuba Libre tutorial videos. Woo, these have been a process, but this is gonna be a short one. I just wanna talk you through the propaganda rounds and also victory conditions. So you know what the, the basic victory conditions are because they're printed here in the boxes, but we're gonna talk about when you determine whether there's a winner. And we're also gonna talk about what happens when you draw your final propaganda card and there's still just not a winner. So. How do you know it's time for a propaganda round? Well, you know, you're minding your own business, you're going through event cards, and boom, you draw a propaganda card. And it is gonna walk you through all the little steps, but we're gonna talk about exactly what they mean because I think that's a good thing to do. Depending on how you constructed your deck, uh, these should be relatively evenly distributed throughout. There are possibilities that somehow you're gonna end up with two propaganda cards in a row, and the rule book does account for how you're supposed to handle that. But basically the rule is that you can never, ever conduct more than one propaganda round in a row. You need at least one event card in between. So basically that means that additional propaganda cards are played without a propaganda round and they leave the game. If this happens at the end of the game, then you just do one final propaganda round, even if there were two cards and you determine the winner from there. So as you can see on this lovely card, the first phase is called victory or more specifically victory. This is because the first thing you do in your propaganda round is see if somebody won the game. And by see if somebody won the game, I mean see if somebody's currently meeting their victory conditions based on the ones that are actually in their player boxes on the board. So that's the first thing you're going to look at. If somebody's winning, congratulations, you win the game, we're done. But most of the time when you draw this card, that's not what's going to happen. So you're going to do victory. Uh-oh, nobody won. Now what do we do? We go through the rest of the steps. So this next one is resources, and this is how people get money. Each faction gets money in a different way. So we're just going to detail that really quickly here so you can hear it. I do always recommend, by the way, that you just have the rulebook with you the whole time. I do, even when I know this game pretty well now. But let's go through how people make that money. So for the government, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to place a sabotage marker in any of the ECs where Directorio and 26 July gorillas outnumber government cubes. So let's say that we manage to just put a gorilla here. Uh, well, guess what? There's nobody in the government to protect this EC. So, oops. It gets sabotaged. So when you are the government, you've got a lot of different headaches to deal with because you have to advance your goals, but you also have got to protect those ECs because they impact the money you can make. Yikes. So basically what will happen is you have to sabotage any of the ECs with the 26th of July plus the Directorio. Uh, gorillas will outnumber your cubes. Then you add the total economic value of the ECs that are unsabotaged. So basically that means that you're adding the little round numbers that are on the EC circles if they're not sabotaged. So if these two are sabotaged, you're only going to get three in that total. If they're all good, the highest amount of resources the government can pick up from this is eight. And then you're also going to add aid. So remember that aid token that was up here that I told you was not money in the board tour? That's because the aid is used to generate resources during this propaganda round. So the government gets the total economic value of unsabotaged ECs plus aid. And that's their resources for the next little era of play. By the way, you can also track all of these steps along here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we talked about victory. We're currently talking about resources. So how does everybody else get money? So for insurgent earnings, the 26th of July gets resources according to the number of bases that it has. So right now that is one that is so bad. You've got to get your bases out of your 26th of July. No ifs, ands, or buts because your resources depend on it. The Directorio gets resources based on the number of spaces where it has pieces. So right now with the starting setup, that's only two spaces. You definitely want to make sure you spew out some pieces before the propaganda round. And you want to make sure they're in different spaces because that way you're going to get rewarded with some delicious resources to spend. The syndicate makes money based on two conditions that you add together. One is twice the number of open casinos. So we have three open casinos in the starting setup. If they're open, 
you make money off of them when you hit the propaganda realm. Twice the number of open casinos, in fact. So that's six resources sitting right there. If they're closed, you get nothing. You also add the population of each city and the economic value of each EC that is not sabotaged where syndicate guerrillas outnumber the police. So basically the idea is that the government and the syndicate are kind of working together, but if the syndicate has the upper hand in these areas, they're going to get a cut. And so according to those calculations, you're going to take your resources, but then everything is going to change again because this game is a game of change. Uh, because after you do everybody's base resource calculation, you have a step that's called the skim. And this is especially important for you if you are the syndicate. For each space that has an open casino, the syndicate has to transfer two resources to the controlling faction of that place. So, for example, here we have an open casino in a government-controlled area. The government's going to skim money off my casino here. No. And then we have to talk about cash deposits. So we've talked about putting these cash tokens out. You know, a lot of times when you hit the propaganda round, there's still going to be cash tokens sitting out on the board. And we're going to have to remove them, but you get something for that. So the controlling faction of each cash deposit gets to remove that cash deposit and then make a choice about what they want to do with it. So your easiest option is just plus six resources. That's a lot of money. You could just take it and use it to cause mayhem uh, for the next few rounds of play. But you can also use that cash to receive an available base or a casino, an open casino specifically. Or if you are the syndicate, you are able to change one of the casinos from closed to open. And the reason that that matters is that any bases that you place or casinos that you open at this point do affect either control. So when a casino is open, uh, it has control effects. So if this casino were closed, then the 26th of July would automatically have control of this area. With the casino open, it counts as rival pieces for control. So you want to keep your casinos open if you want them to count. And it also counts towards game end victory. And I'm going to show you how to calculate that in just a moment. So anything that you can place out or open at this time is going to affect your victory margin if nobody's just won it outright already. So that is the resources phase of the propaganda card. Now we go to support. Support, that's so funny. Oh, that sweet little U.S. alliance. It was never going to last. So basically what happens is we've got this U.S. alliance track over here. During the support phase, you look at the total support for the government. If it is 18 or less, which it is even from the start... Well, I guess that you have to degrade this U.S. box downward if it is uh, if it is possible to do so. And you do aid minus 10. So see how the government in that first resource phase would have gotten 15 aid? Well, now it's going to be five. Unless they can do something about the aid off of the event cards. And then if that happens again in the next round, it's going to be nothing. So the government basically has this this situation where they're getting fewer resources from their U.S. alliance, and they're also um, having to spend more to do every last little thing on the board. So their job just gets a lot harder if they can't maintain some control at the beginning of the game. This is also the point in the propaganda round where the government can choose to do some civic actions. So even after the U.S. alliance has degraded, you know, you're still going to want to have support that's part of the government's win condition. So at this point, the government can spend any number of resources they want to build support in government controlled cities or provinces that have both troops and police. So as the government, you're going to have to think a lot about making sure that you get both troops and police into various areas on the map, which is harder to do than it looks because you also have to move them at the end of each of these propaganda rounds. But you need to get them out there because you need a combination of troops and police and you also need government control in order to perform the civic actions that are expensive, but that will garner you some support. So we mentioned civic actions back when we were talking about government operations and what they could do. But just to recap, when you do a civic action, you pay for resources. And then every time you do that, it removes one terror marker. Remember, they can stack, so you might have a bunch. Or once all the terror markers in an area are gone, uh, then it shifts the level of support one level towards active. So this is where you want to have a lot of money because you need to blow a lot of money in areas that you control to 
pull support in your direction as much as possible. Also during this phase, everybody else gets to do stuff too. So the 26th of July gets to spend their resources to encourage opposition in cities or provinces that are controlled by the 26th of July faction. So every one resource they spend can remove one terror marker or once all the terror markers are gone, it shifts it one level towards active opposition. So basically the government can solidify their control over spaces they hold. The 26th of July can solidify their hold over places that they're in control of. The directorio can then do something called expat backing, which lets them do a free rally in one space. As long as there's neither active support, active opposition or control by any faction other than directorio. So the directorio at least gets to put somebody out there. And if this is a final propaganda round, this is actually where the game will end. If this is not the final propaganda round, you've got like a good honking deck right here uh, to keep playing through, then we're going to continue. But basically, if it's the last propaganda round, nobody won outright. You do victory, resources, and support phases. If it's not the final propaganda round, you're going to keep playing because there's still propaganda cards in the deck. Then we're going to do redeploy and reset as well. All right, so how do you redeploy? Redeploying means the government can move any police to any ECs or government controlled spaces. So that means that I can move my police to ECs that I want to protect or to any government controlled spaces where I want to make sure there are some cops present. So now that we talked about what the government may move, we now have to talk about what the government must move. So they may move police to any ECs or government controlled spaces. They must move any troops who are on ECs or who are in provinces that don't have government bases back to government controlled spaces. So you might've been in the middle of a fantastic little invasion and you know, you're working hard to get control, but once you hit that propaganda round, you got to pull everybody back to spaces that you control. Uh, or if you were smart and you've got a bunch of bases sitting out in the provinces, you can leave your guys there. So when you're placing bases as the government, you should probably think about that. And then the government may move any other troops to government controlled cities or bases. So you can move your police and troops around to places that you control, places where you have bases, cities. You have to move all of your troops out of ECs and out of provinces where you don't have bases and where you don't have control. Then you do the reset phase. Pawns are going to be all over the place. You're going to move them all back to eligible. You're going to remove all of the terror and sabotage markers you've managed to rack up out here. If there are any government momentum cards that you've pulled and that you've been enjoying as the government, then you have to put those momentum cards away. They go onto the played cards pile. They don't have effect anymore. You flip all of your gorillas to underground. You flip all of your casinos to open and you do get to adjust the open casinos marker. And then you just start playing again. You play the next card from the draw deck. You reveal the next card and you continue to play. So that is how a propaganda round works. The best, the most important thing to pay attention to during them is what happens when and why it matters. So if you're not playing for victory right now, you have to kind of decide long-term what it is you want. For example, the syndicate would basically never pay to open a casino that they were just going to get open for free at the end of the propaganda round, unless it was going to actually do some good. And that is the propaganda round. So let's say that this was the final propaganda round. Now we've done everything and we're going to look for our victory. Um, if nobody has won the game outright, then you calculate victory basically by looking at what you have and subtracting what you were supposed to have. So everybody will get a negative score and you want to just be like the least negative. <laughs> so the government victory margin is their total support minus 18 because they were supposed to have over 18 support. 26th of July totals up their opposition and their bases and they subtract 15 because they were supposed to have greater than 15 in that count. The directorio adds up the population they control and the bases they have and they subtract nine because they were supposed to get to nine or greater. And then the syndicate chooses the lower of two options. So you look at your open casinos and subtract seven. You look at your syndicate resources and subtract 30. And then you take the worst of those two numbers. And then whoever lost the least is the one who wins the game. So hopefully that was helpful and gave you a sense kind of, again, of what you're playing for and why you want to put stuff in various locations on this map. And that in conjunction with all of the operations that we talked about in each of the faction videos should give you a good sense of what to do where and when and it will take practice so don't panic as long as you can make the pieces go around accurately you'll figure the rest out in time so that's how you do a propaganda round and how you check to see who won the game uh thank you so much for watching please like subscribe comment and most of all happy gaming